In the beginning, we're just dealing with water. It seems like any other kind of water, but when we discover that this water has therapeutic properties, and we decide to dig a little deeper to understand what gives it these properties, well, that leads to a real treasure hunt that requires increasingly sophisticated techniques. This is an exciting path. Aven, a peaceful village nestled in the seven mountains in the south of France. A village with rich, preserved natural surroundings. The hills overlook the Languedoc with the deep Mediterranean nearby. Nature is in safe hands here. We are deep in the Oolong Dock Natural Park. There's a unique spring here. A spring that cares for skin. This spring is known all over the world for its range of skincare products. and it cares for the needs of the most sensitive skin. But what is the secret behind Avon Thermal Spring Water? We search high and low in quest of this secret. We return to where it all began. The answers lay in the skies above and in the earth below. We followed years and years of clues and observed nature to analyze and understand the water's journey. Now, after this wonderful exploration, the Avon water finally reveals a part of its mystery, its origin. It is very important for researchers to know the origins of the thermal water, to know exactly how it's formed, how it filters underground, how it gains mineral content. And we will include all this information for both scientific knowledge, but also as part of a protective approach. Since the natural environment can be a fragile environment, we have to ensure that this water is preserved to a maximum extent. This water has been studied for a very long time. It was discovered in 1736. Since 1736, there have been several manuscripts that show us how the water has been studied specifically by doctors and dermatologists who've tried to understand the origins of the thermal water's activity. That is what is interesting at Aven. There is an enormous amount of data gathered, temperature measurements, measurements of chemical properties, which were gathered over decades and decades and which are now available. So you see, we have quite a considerable amount of information about this spring, much more than you would usually find about thermal or mineral springs in France. Professor de Marseille is an Emiratus professor and a leading scientist known for his scientific works, particularly those dealing with challenges related to the water. I think the first thing we need to have in mind is the scientific curiosity. We have an active water. We want to know why it is active. It's a bit the opposite of what happens when producing medicine, where you start with a molecule and then you test its activity. In this case, we're proceeding the opposite way. So it's sort of like a decoding process, a quest to find out exactly how far we can go in getting the most precise information. At Aven, we have continental water. Water recently formed from the evaporation of the seas, meaning mostly the Mediterranean, with a little of the Atlantic Ocean. Because according to the wind direction, there could be rain from the Atlantic that falls onto the massive rocks at Aven. When this water evaporates from the sea, it is practically pure. But when it falls again as rain, it mixes in with the sea spray, which is made up of little particles of seawater that have not evaporated, and therefore contain mostly mineral salts, sodium chloride, calcium, 
and magnesium in particular, in all the elements found in the seawater. The catchment area is a geological zone where the rainwater that falls and filters underground ends up after its complicated journey to the spring. In the case of Aven, the surface of the catchment area is estimated between 20 and 30 kilometers squared, which is quite large. It covers an area that is rather mountainous, covered with vegetation. It's a natural forest. When dealing with a thermal mineral spring, the first question that comes to mind is, can this rainwater trickling down be contaminated when it reaches the soil? Rainwater that falls into the catchment area can become contaminated if there is human, agricultural, industrial or domestic activity that can cause pollutants. So at Aven, we are very lucky to have a catchment area that belongs entirely to a natural park of Olenduk and that is entirely protected. There is no polluting activity that might contaminate the water. Once the water has passed through the soil, dissolved the carbon gas and has become acidic, it reaches the rock. At Aven, the rock in question is dolomite, which is a calcareous rock rich in magnesium that contains quite a lot of cracks and is also porous. Since the water is acidic, it can react with the calcium and dissolve the carbonates and minerals. The water forms its own mineral profile in the rock and comes in contact with special microflora contained in the rock. We will end up with a double signature, the mineral signature that corresponds to the mineral composition that remains constant and a biological signature, which is the result of the very specific microflora in the event thermal spring water. So it's a double signature. A signature is a mark that is unique to an individual, and here it is unique to the thermal spring water, and that is why we could say it exists nowhere else in the world. The dolomites I mentioned are stratified rocks, which means they settled in layers in the sea, in a lagoon during their formation. But the geological history was complicated and the region became raised, which means that the rock layers straightened themselves. In fact, when the rainwater falls, it mainly follows little stratification lines within the dolomite formation. Then when the rainwater reaches the bottom, at about 1500 meters, it gets to a fault system that was created through tectonic plates and stratification that facilitated the emergence of a trough inclined at about 70%. The rising of the thermal water at Aven can be explained by two mechanisms that add up. The first is the heating of the water. The water at the bottom is heated, they therefore become lighter, and this accelerates their rise to the surface. At Aven, there is also a siphon effect. In the subsoil, the water's migration rate is generally extremely slow. The movement rate of the water through the subsoil at the deepest level can be lower than a meter per day. So at Aven lies yet another mystery. What we believe to be the water that had the longest journey to make and that reaches the deepest parts of the soil is certainly over 50 years old. We're sure of this. We could even say that it is several hundred years old or even a thousand years old. When this water rises to the ascending branch of the siphon, it mixes with the water that has reached to the lowest level and is therefore the most recent. So when it arrives at the spring, we have a mixture of this deep water and the cooler water found closer to the surface, since it's at 27 degrees at the spring emergence point, while in the ground, the water is about 65 degrees. What is amazing about Aven is that the mixture percentage of the two sets of water does not change. So even as time goes by, the same percentage of the two sets of water always reaches the surface and makes up the very special chemical composition of the Aven water. After a long journey underground, the Aven water finally arrives here.
It is collected pure and intact at a depth of 160 meters and provide therapeutic, soothing, anti-irritating and anti-inflammatory action. Avon Thermal Spring Water has a unique and changing composition. It is a precious resource. Because of this, it deserves to be recognized as natural wealth that must be preserved for future generations.